Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Uh, let's see. Oh, a Bray Wyatt hype video. So, Wyndham Rotunda and I had very, very different ideas of what pro wrestling can be and should be. But man, this early Bray Wyatt stuff, at this point it's just him. He doesn't have his two giant buddies yet. Just a scary swamp monster. Yeah, which is fine. It was awesome. There was nothing supernatural about it. He no. wasn't doing magic. No. It was just a it was just a character. He lives alone in the swamp in the woods. He's he's scary. He already tell he already tells you I am a monster. Monsters are real. I'm one of them. There's a pig mask in there because some things never change. The music is there. The, 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 what, the, the classic Bray Wyatt music. This is great. This is great. Good things come to those that believe in Bray Wyatt. You know, it's funny, like, uh, I know I know some people reminisce about The Fiend and everything like that, you know, especially because he's passed away. But honestly, the best Bray Wyatt and I think the best Bo Dallas was all this period. When Bo Dallas, like, he didn't get over like they wanted him to get over, Bo. But, you know, he was, he was a good-looking guy. He was a good baby face. He could work all right. He was fine. You know, they, they definitely could have done something with Bo Dallas. And it, uh, you know, didn't work out like that. And then Bray, they had to go full fucking full bore into the hocus pocus. And, uh, you know, people, people, there were people that definitely liked it, but it did. I think if we can all be honest here, more harm than good. It hurt a lot of baby faces. It, it did a lot of damage, but it did sell a lot of merch. I will give them that. And they announced that the WrestleMania 28 DVD outsold the Super Bowl DVD. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people didn't watch the Super Bowl. They just got it on DVD later. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to skip it this year. I'll wait till the DVD comes out. That's and, Super Bowl. And, of course, the... Yeah. the Gosh, I wonder who wins. The, the the number of people who will actually sit back and watch all the football games. I'm, tr I'm one of them. They're out there, but it's small. <laughs> it's small. The unnamed Derek Bateman goes to meet Johnny Curtis. He says, Curtis wants to meet me in the bathroom. Curtis comes out of a stall, and he says he is sick. Bateman accuses him of faking being sick to get out of the main event next week. My God, you know what that Super Bowl was? Off the top of my head, I do not. The Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> the one Super Bowl. No, that, Bowl. Was, that was the next year. You that sure? Was 2000. The 20, the 20, oh, 2014. Yeah, yeah. It no, was the, 2012 was this show. Yeah. No, nah, this. Well, the date of twenty. Oh, this the show was twenty twelve. This yeah. year is twenty twelve, yeah. which means the NFL season will be twenty eleven. Okay, so this, this should be okay. Ravens and 49ers. I this, For some reason, I, I thought this was twenty fourteen. How was that? Now I gotta look it up. Anyway, <laughs> what twenty twelve? Yeah, I, I can tell you that. You got in front of you. Yeah, twenty twenty. Uh, twenty Giants and Patriots. Yeah, the second one. All right. Thank God we got that settled. Okay, so Bateman and Johnny Curtis. One hundred eleven million viewers. Yeah, did well. Did well. Except for the ones that got it on DVD. <laughs> So, for those of you who don't know, Derek Bateman is EC3. Johnny Curtis is uh, Fandango, best known as Fandango. Mm -hmm. They're two really weird dudes. Yeah. And they put these two weird dudes on camera and said, be fucking weird. Well, apparently they were, like, uh, teaming together. Well, no, they're main, they're main eventing against each other. No, I, th I think during the promo they talked about, like, they had been a team or something. I, I could see. be wrong. I see. I think All I know is they were week. in the bathroom. I was thinking, like, holy shit, this is where Rob got this idea. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Well, especially with... EC3 and Fandango meet in the bathroom. Especially what one of them says near the end when he says how he was thinking about what he was going to do to another guy in the bathroom. <laughs> I missed that part, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, anyway, they're going to fight, and uh, Fandango, still in TNA, JDC, Johnny Dango Curtis is his name now. EC3 is the current world champion in, in, in the NWA and the national champion in Ohio Valley, so... Everyone's still going strong. Your main event is Michael McGilly Cuddy versus Tyson Kidd, the only guy on this show who is still healthy and alive and not wrestling is Michael McGilly Cuddy. As far as I can tell, his last match was a loss to Dan Bryan on SmackDown in 2020, briefly an agent in 2022, and I don't know what he's been doing the past couple of years. Well, Tyson Kidd doesn't wrestle anymore. No, but he is he is an agent, and and he would be wrestling. That's uh, Okay, you got me there. He would be wrestling if he had not hurt his neck. Because yeah. he was awesome. And if you didn't yeah. know that, watch this match. God damn. Yeah, by the way, uh, EC3 and Johnny Curtis were, in fact, uh, FCW Florida Tag Team Champions. Ah, there you go, 2010. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were friends, and then later they did a 
gimmick with Maxine and anyway. Yeah, this uh, this Tyson kid is awesome, and uh, he was one of the guys that we also saw uh, in that garage yep. in in uh, oh yeah whatever the fuck it was teaming with Pacific you, uh, we, we watched Pacific you Washington junkyard. yeah Becky Lynch was there facing the uh, the future the future Becky Lynch and yeah, yeah Tyson oh. and Harry Smith and oh yeah yeah he was he was uh, quite great and Johnny Curtis was a or not Johnny Curtis. Um, Michael, Michael McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy, which, God. Mm-hmm. Curtis I mean, Axel. E- mm-hmm. Either way, it's like you've got the son of Kurt Hennig. Like, he'd probably be something today if they would just called him, like, Hennig. Yeah. But instead, yeah. they had to give him two stupid names yeah. while acknowledging he's the son of Kurt Hennig. It's just, it was so stupid. But, you know, he was solid enough, and this was a very good main event. Mm-hmm. So Tyson's making his comeback. I, I also love that the, the first part of the match, uh, they're... Building up to a commercial break, and uh, McGillicuddy rolls out of the ring, and Tyson hits a tope, and uh, we see seven thousand dives on every show. And, the, and if there had been five other dives in the show, it wouldn't matter have mattered as much. But Tyson is like surprised that the guy's out of the ring and realizes, "Hey, I can hit a dive." He looks around, checks the ropes to make sure that's there, and he's in the right spot. Looks at the crowd to fire them off. They go, "Yeah, do a dive, do a dive." He does the most basic. First day of Lucha Tope you ever saw. It's totally safe. The place goes insane. That was great. And again, it helps it was the only time of the show. But uh, he's making his comeback later, hitting a flurry of kicks, and McGillicuddy does, does, does McGillicuddy, McGillicuddy does his daddy's McGillicuddy. I, I'm not a good podcaster. Well, well, another reason they make up these stupid names. Yeah, actually. Yeah, let's yeah. make up a That's name their fault. that Vinny can pronounce. Yeah. I mean, they, they got us. You have a name he's built in, as Brian said. And then you make up this name, and you have to spend extra money to build up, make this guy into someone when he already is someone. Yes. And then you cut him loose. So stupid company. <laughs> Tyson counters a suplex with a double jump moonsault, and McGilly Kelly gets the sharpshooter, but Kid gets the ropes. Tyson traps him in something called the dungeon lock. It was wacky, a wacky loser submission. Mm-hmm. McGilly Cuddy frantically taps out. That's the end of the show. A very good match to tap this off. I enjoyed this much more than what we typically get from NXT in 2024. Really? Most recently. Well, I would say that it was a it was a better show, but it certainly was not as an exciting a show as uh, the usual NXT. Because NXT's got a lot of shit going on. They got a lot of angles. They got a lot of storylines. They got a lot of wackiness. Most of which suck. Yeah, well, I still I find it to be much more exciting, hmm. as I'm about to have to watch that show right now. In fact, <laughs> trying to psych yourself up. There, yes, there was not one woman's match. There was not woman. No, there was not a woman. The women's uh, evolution hadn't happened up. yet. It was just all fellas. Yeah, there all wasn't fellas. even a. Uh, there wasn't even a valet. Yeah, there was. That was it. All men's yeah. matches. Times have certainly changed. I mean, I'll say. Why don't we start reading some questions, <laughs> and we'll see if we can spur some answers out of Granny. Shall we try? No, I don't think so. Let's try. <laughs> then, then you'll really find out how dumb I am. Granny, did you know there was a wrestling bear? I uh, know, <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a bear that wrestled people. I still don't care. Okay. What is your favorite breakfast cereal of all time? What's your favorite cereal, Granny? You know what cereal is? I can't eat it. Fruit Islands, S'mores Crunch, Rocky Road, Original Recipe, Cookie Crisp, and of course all the video game inspired cereals like Super Mario and, and Donkey Kong, and there was a Nerds cereal, cereal that tasted like candy. There's two bags inside the box, and one was grape and one was cherry. Oh, it was oh. great. Dunkin' Donuts had an excellent great. cereal for a while. These are all gone. These are all gone. What is your least favorite pizza brand? Little Caesars. The answer is Little like Caesars. It. There used to be a great, great pizza throughout the Northwest called Pietro's Pizza. Every memory of yours is about something from the deep past that your sad is no longer around. Yeah. I yeah, they could be all my favorite food. Just go to Mod Pizza and love it. That sounds good. Is Granny frozen? Granny, you frozen? No, I'm ready to read my report. Your picture is frozen. It is. Yeah. Or you're doing a great job as a ventriloquist. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.